Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. In the previous talk through, we cracked the last of the physical barriers, the speed bumps and the bridge. Earlier on, we solved the water tower and that involved fitting an ultrasonic sensor to our robot. The ultrasonic sensor allows the robot to detect the distance it is from an object. Using the ultrasonic sensor, we should be able to design an algorithm that's much faster to find the water can. So let's get started. Here's the line following and can finding program that we've been using to date. Now there's a loop block to the left which contains our main line following code. There's an exit condition here set on the loop block so it exits when the light sensor, in my case sensor 1, sees a value greater than 78. That means the robot is over the silver on the at the start of the chemical spill. This part of the code here is the primitive can finding algorithm that we've used where the robot simply sweeps the chemical spill in a routine pattern pushing anything it passes out of its way. To start we're going to delete this code here and test our program. The robot approaches the chemical spill and detects the silver foil and stops. It's not quite square but we'll look at ways of squaring the robot up down the track in the series of talk throughs for secondary rescue. Now our next task is to get the robot to move to the centre of the chemical spill. So we'll add a move block. We'll set it to control motors A and C for my robot. I'll set the power to 60 and I happen to know that round about 1.6 rotations will take it to the centre of the chemical spill. We'll download, run and test that. The robot approaches the chemical spill, stops on the silver, a bit more square that time and moves to the centre of the chemical spill. That's good. We want the robot to rotate until it detects the can in front of it. So I'll drop down another move block. I'll set its motors once again to A and C. We'll turn up the turn ratio or the steering all the way so the robot turns on the spot. And I'll set its duration to unlimited. Now we'll drop down a weight block. We'll set it to weight for the ultrasonic sensor. By default it's measuring the distance between the ultrasonic sensor and its object in inches. Well, we're more familiar with using centimetres, so I'll change that. And we'll set it to wait until it detects an object 20 centimetres away from it. Once it's detected an object 20 centimetres away, we will stop the motors. Let's compile, download and run that and see how it looks. The robot approaches the chemical spill, detects silver, moves to the centre of the chemical spill and rotates. And as you can see it's overshot the object slightly. Well it seems to do that rather fast and there's a sort of inverse relationship between speed and accuracy. So let's have a shot at slowing down the rotation speed slightly. And as you can see I selected the default power of 75 which is probably too high for this task. So let's adjust that down to say 50 and try again. Robot approaches the chemical spill, stops on silver, moves to the center of the chemical spill and rotates until it detects the can. That's better but it's still overshot it slightly. Let's try again with the can in a different position. The robot stops on the silver, moves to the center of the chemical spill, rotates until it sees the can and stops. This time it's only overshot a little bit so we're making some good progress. How can we solve this overshooting problem? Well one way will be to get the robot to rotate backwards slightly after it has detected the can, knowing full well that it's probably going to overshoot. So let's have a shot at that. We drop down another move block, set it to control motors A and C. At this time we'll crank the turn ratio up the other way. We'll use the power of, uh, what did we use back here? We'll use a power of 50. 
will only set the motors to turn a little bit. Let's say 30 degrees. We'll compile, download and run that. The robot moves to the centre of the chemical spill, rotates that see the can, overshoots and moves back. So the robot overcorrected. It went backwards too far. So clearly the correction of 30 degrees rotation of the motors is too much. So let's adjust that to 15. Compile, download and run. The robot moves to the centre of the chemical spill, rotates until it sees the can, overshoots slightly and comes back just perfectly. Good. We're making some excellent progress here. The next task now is to get the robot to move forward, pushing the can off the chemical spill and then stopping when the can is off the green. The way we can do this is to set the robot's motors running forward but keep checking, checking the light sensor looking for white. So we'll drop down a move block, we'll set it to control motors A and C We'll turn the speed down to 50 and we'll set the duration to unlimited. We'll drop another weight block down. This time we'll set it to weight, weight on the light sensor. We'll set it to weight for light sensor uh, 1. Now I don't remember the threshold I'm using, so I'll come back here and check light sensor 1. What are we using? Uh, greater than 65 is regarded as white. Good. So we'll set it to wait until it sees reflection of greater than 65. Then we will stop the motors. Set them to A and C and stop. Compile, download and run and see what we've got. Robot moves to the centre of the chemical spill, rotates until it sees the can, overshoots, goes back and then moves forward until it sees white. That's looking really good. Now let's try it with the can in a different position. The robot moves to the centre of the chemical spill, rotates, it rotates longer this time until it sees the can, it sees the can Ah, it stopped a bit early this time, and when it's correcting, it's gone back too far. So it's ended up missing the can. Hmm. Well, that's a bit of a problem. So sometimes the robot overshoots, and sometimes it undershoots. How are we going to solve that? Well, one way is to use the ultrasonic sensor more intelligently. But that requires some fairly challenging coding. So we'll have a look at that technique in the series of talk-throughs for Senior Rescue. But what we can do here is get the robot to have a couple of shots at finding the can. So it moves forward until it sees white, and then it moves back, and it does it all again. So that's fairly simple. All that, is, all that will be involved is putting our find the can code inside a loop. So, we'll drop down a loop. Now, we need to put it here because we still need the code that stops the motors after line following and moves the robot to the centre of the chemical spill to be executed. But we want that code to be executed only once. We'll move all the can finding code inside the loop block. And we'll add one more block so when the robot has moved forward and detected white, it's off the edge of the chemical spill, it will move back the other way to the centre of the chemical spill. Now, we know we had to use 1.6 rotations to move from the silver to the centre of the chemical spill. We'll have to move slightly less because the robot's already partially over the chemical spill. So I set the motors to be controlled to be A and C. I'll set the rotations to 1.4 and the power to 60. So we compile, download and run this and see how it looks. 
robot enters the chemical spill, moves to the center, rotates until it sees the can, it undershoots it, it misses the can, and it comes back to the center of the chemical spill for another attempt. Looks like it's got it right this time, and it has successfully pushed the can off the chemical spill. Good. I think we can safely say we've solved the RoboCup primary rescue challenge. Let's have a look one more time at this robot in action, pushing the can off the chemical spill. Moves forward to the center of the chemical spill. It rotates until it sees the can. Oh, it undershot horribly this time, but not to fear because it's going to have several attempts at it. And on the second attempt, it gets the can off the chemical spill. It has one more shot just for good luck. Have a shot at implementing that and then you can build yourself the nastiest rescue course you can come up with to test your robot. Good luck with your coding. The material we're covering in these talk throughs is hard and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often, it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org slash help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years 5 to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.